Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. This is the first video in a three-part series all about item and material progression in Valheim. There's a lot of different materials and resources that you'll find and it can be quite intimidating. So I put together this little guide so that you can have a loose understanding of where to get what you need. This video will focus on the meadows, the black forest, and the swamp. Let's get into it. You see how I picked up some wood, and then all of these wood build pieces are showing up? That's because I picked up wood for the first time. The recipes don't show up in the build menu here, or on the crafting bench, until you found the appropriate material. The first things you pick up are going to be wood and stone. This is immediately going to make a variety of different items available to you. After you've found stone and wood, you'll come across some flint. You'll be able to use the flint to create a new axe, and then also some upgrades for the workbench. The next material one finds is typically neck meat or boar meat, and then deer meat, along with deer hide. You'll also find trophies. They don't always drop, so they're sort of a special thing that you get every four or five kills and certain enemies have really rare trophy rates. Trophies usually aren't used for anything, but some trophies are actually used for certain recipes, so you won't unlock the recipe until you find that particular trophy. Once you've gotten some deer hide, you'll be able to make some leather armor and some other stuff. Boars will give you leather scraps, which are an important crafting tool that you'll use in a wide variety of different items. When you get into the Black Forest, you'll find these pine trees. After you cut it down, you'll get core wood, a new kind of wood. This is going to unlock even more building recipes and enable you to make these. Core wood allows you to make these long wood poles, which have more structural integrity than the regular wood. So, Core wood allows you to build higher structures. And then, once you get a bronze axe from your exploration in the Black Forest, you'll be able to go back to the meadows and find fine wood by cutting down these birch trees. Fine wood is an incredibly useful resource that's used in a lot of higher end stuff, such as furniture, beds, and weaponry. The next kind of wood comes from the swamp. As you explore, you'll find these little trees. Don't confuse them with the big trees, which are invincible. The little trees, the ancient trees, you can cut them down. And once you do so, you'll get wood and ancient bark. Ancient bark is a resource that's mostly used to make boats, although it is also used in a couple other weapons. In addition to those woods, there's also metal in Valheim. The first metals you'll find are tin and copper, and you'll have to smelt them and do all that. Once you've picked up the metal bar for the first time, you'll unlock a couple, but you won't unlock the rest of them until you make a bronze bar out of your copper and your tin, and then you'll get a bunch of different items. And you'll unlock even more items by making bronze nails for the first time. This is gonna allow you to build all sorts of stuff like carts and ships. Once you get iron, it's the same. You'll get the ore from the crypts, and then bring it back and smelt it, and then get the iron bars. And that'll advance you into the Iron Age, and you'll be able to make a whole bunch of iron equipment and all sorts of different gear. Just like the bronze nails, there are iron nails. And once you make iron nails, this will unlock a lot of the different higher level furniture, such as the next boat and all of the thrones and the advanced bed. But in order to smelt all that metal and make all those nails, you need to find something. And here they are, Sirtling Cores. Once you loot Sirtling Cores for the first time, you'll be able to make Smelter and a Kiln. And this is how you get started with your metalworking. Once you've reached the Bronze Age, you'll be able to make a Cultivator. And after you equip the Cultivator for the first time, you'll be able to make new plants. Plants become available once you loot the seed if it's a tree, or you find the seed in the swamp, the mountain, or the black forest. The kind of food you can make and the quality of it will bottleneck you until you've picked up turnips and mushrooms and carrots. 
Then, once you find some thistle, either in the black forest or the swamp, you're no longer bottleneck. So you have to find the seeds, use the cultivator, and grow them to pick them up for the first time. And now you'll be able to make the spice rack, provided you also picked up some dandelions from the hundreds of gray dwarf you're destined to kill. And the spice rack is a really important item because it allows you to make stronger food. With the spice rack, you're gonna be able to make turnip stew and sausages from the droger. Much better food than what you've been used to. While you're in the swamp, make sure that you kill a couple of these wraiths. Because the wraiths will drop this chain. And once you pick up chain, you'll unlock a better cooking station and some forge upgrades. And it's also used to make a few of the better weapons and armor. You're gonna want sort of as much chain as possible because you'll find that you run out of it, especially later on when you need to use it to build the better stuff. Another optional resource is actually the shittin that you can mine from the barnacles on these floating islands. But be careful because once you start mining it, the island will sink and disappear. But it's often worth it because you can come here as soon as you can sail with the most basic pickaxe, the antler pickaxe. And that's going to give you some shittin, which is going to allow you to make two main items, the abyssal razor, a really, really strong dagger early in the game. You can even fight goblin with it in the plains. And the harpoon, which is a meme item that's incredibly useful for doing all sorts of stunts. I'm sure you've seen them on YouTube. Thanks for watching the first part of our material item progression guide. Consider checking out the other two videos about mid game, which is the mountains and the plains, or late game, the mistlands. And if you'd like to support my work, check out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server. This way, your friends can log on and play and build stuff when you're doing other stuff. And this makes the Valheim world feel more alive than if you're just playing regular multiplayer. Because really, your friends can only access their own worlds, and you can only access your own world. You can't log on to their world when they're not there, and they can't log on to your world when you're not there. But people have busy schedules and our lives don't always line up properly. So it's very useful to have your own dedicated server. If you really enjoy Valheim, I encourage you to do it. And that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next part of the series.